I, my Illinois sweats are on anyway during the game. Even <laughs> and, then, and then Nebraska had their, and they always lose when they play those uh, black uniforms. Yeah, that's a cur that's that's, that's, that's yep. I agree. They handed out the black shirts. They put those black uniforms on, and the defense disappears. With the skull and skull and crossbones on. Jolly Roger. <laughs> yeah, Jolly Roger. <laughs> oh my god. Talk in there, I, two I, guys. I, there's one for Susie and one for Greta too. Oh, so. sweet. Thank you. Yeah. Something like Appreciate that. Appreciate it. was halfway for the. <laughs> Halfway in the, I didn't see the kickoff, so it was about halfway into the first quarter before <laughs> I realized that Nebraska was in the black. Because <laughs> I thought Illinois, so I saw Illinois with those uh, yeah orange, orange dark yeah. orange, but they come out red on the yeah, TV set. Yeah. <laughs> well, we were seeing red. <laughs> well, get down to the business. You fumble here. on the ten yard line, the first play of the game. It, uh, that was a referee special, though. He was beyond the line of scrimmage. That should have been an illegal forward pass. Yeah. But I don't know why they can't. No, he was beyond the line of scrimmage. Penalty. He should have been a penalty. That's, that's where Kevin Warren comes into play, I think. He's paid the uh, refs off to oh, okay. make sure we had a bad season. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> well, you're, you're a conspiracy uh, you know, I mean, advocate. Yeah. Can't you challenge a call? You can, you got one challenge in your pocket. Yeah, I tell you, first I to start the game, I would have. It was over the line of scrimmage. It's in the red zone. Like, and it was a forward pass. Well, we're here for Bible study the first Sunday of Advent, and yeah. we can't get over a football, football <laughs> game. And uh, we're going to pray for, we're going to pray for uh, the world, those in need, and Husker football. So and basketball starts at 11 today. So let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. <laughs> I didn't realize it was so early. Let's, yeah, we, let's hurry up and pray. Gracious Lord, we, we ask that you be with us here in our, our, our Bible study, our weekly Bible study. And on this day before Thanksgiving, we uh, are mindful of the blessings that you've given to us and to our families, to our lives, to this world especially in a time that doesn't seem like there are many things to give thanks for sometimes. Uh, we ask that you help to still our minds and our hearts so that we can uh, hear your voice here in our study and, and to remember how precious uh, your gifts are to us. Uh, we ask your blessings upon those this day that are uh, maybe under the weather, maybe suffering from COVID, maybe uh, experiencing uh, harsh symptoms, maybe they're just experiencing the inconvenience of the illness. We ask that uh, you be with all of them and all of us. And again, uh, be with our Huskers on Friday as they beat Iowa as well. Mm -hmm. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. That, would be, that would be an example of uh, we went over the uh, fourth petition of the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Last, last week and yeah. giving us our daily bread Give us our daily and bread. <laughs> okay. we talked to the class about the difference between wants and needs yeah that last that last petition in that prayer was a want not a need. <laughs> so, just make it competitive yeah <laughs> just I mean, well if they're gonna win one game at all in the next 300 some odd days it better be iowa so. <laughs> yeah uh isaiah 64 advent one i can read i can read that oh that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages <coughs> past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God beside you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right 
those who remember you and your ways. But you were angry and we sinned because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. That's one of the things that I think we forget many times is that ever, every human being on this earth is created by God. Sometimes we hate people who are different from us or believe differently from us. We forget that God loves them all. Yeah, yes, for sure. I hear the fleeting nature of life in this as well, especially verse six. We all fade like a leaf. Yeah. The wind take us away. And we all die to this earth. We're all sinners. But God can mold us. And they're what we should be. Well, According I think to our own free will. Well. Yeah. If he can mold us, we just have to be moldable. <laughs> yeah. And it's interesting that uh, we're moldy and moldable both. Mold. <laughs> we're rotting from the time we're we're born all downhill there seems to be a, a call to remember here in this in this as well uh verse five those you meet those who gladly do right those who remember you in your ways there's a call for us to remember who god is and what god has done but then also in verse nine um it talks about the memory of god and and rem do not remember the iniquity forever that we are all your people. And, uh, you know, it's, it's trying to re reset, I think, the relationship between God and God's creation and God's people by remembering who each of them are. I mean, in the third Isaiah, third Isaiah uh, passages, it's all about remembering as they go back into the land of Judah, remembering how the way things were and to not forget how to worship God. And where does third Isaiah start? Which one? 56. 56, yeah. yeah that out here. Well, that's you know, our discussion about uh, by grace we are saved. And I think this passage points to the fact that God's always there and he remembers us, but we, we need to remember him. Mm -hmm. So we need to have some action. And that's interesting. This is the very first reading of Advent. The very first one. And what is, and it, it's that call to remember remember who God is and the and the waiting and the preparation the anticipation we'll do all well, these readings now yeah you're safe yeah.
do all these readings point to Christ? I mean, and during Advent, it's building up, building up, building up until uh, you know, the birth of Christ or? Well, there's, so there's 16, 16 of these lessons um, in Advent. And I guess I'd have to read through, you know, through all of them. But my guess is that they all are trying to help us in our waiting and in our preparation um, to, to help explore what that means in our own faith. Um, yeah, I think it's, I mean, I've never, and I've never researched this. I've never thought about this, but you know, it just struck me today about this, um, the people here wanting to see the face of God and yet, you know, uh, on Mount Sinai, uh, and and as the people are being led through the wilderness of Sinai, the wilderness of sin, uh, you know, seeing the face of God was certain death. You know, if you see the face of God, you uh, you would not live. Was the idea. Uh, and so I'm, I'm wondering, when did that change uh, for the Israelites that now the focus is not on seeing the face of God, but talking about the hiddenness of God and where um, and why, um, why is God hiding his face from us um, and trying to come, come to terms with what does it mean that God is is hiding himself or herself or whatever you want to you know however you refer to God? Uh, but you know how do we how do we talk about it? Maybe he didn't want to be on Zoom like like Don and I. He's, yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's uh, but I think you know it's well even you know when they're you know when they're in Egypt you know. God's protecting them, and when they're they're coming out of Egypt, God is with them. And when they're in the desert, you know, God is visibly helping them with the manna and the birds, and the, you know, <coughs> God is visibly sending them signs. But well, yeah, I mean, God leads them in a pillar of cloud. Right, fire, fire. He's not visible, but he's visible in his in, action through and, things, yeah. Through things. And the and arc so of the for a few hundred years, you know, he really hasn't been visible to them because they've been enslaved, you know, they've been taken into exile. And so I think this, well, this is, you know, show us, you know, give us a sign, God, give us a sign. Well, I mean, the interesting thing is that Third Isaiah is essentially written as they are returning from exile. Uh huh. And Cyrus is, I mean, in, earlier in Third Isaiah, it is Cyrus who is Cyrus the Persian is the one who is um, seen as the the chosen one of God, who's uh, you know granted. The Israelites the right to return to their, their to their home mm -hmm. and uh, and so how do we uh, so it's what what is it what is the sign um, what are the signs they're looking for that's uh, you know what what does it mean what does it mean to, for God to show God's face? No, well, he finally does in the baby, the incarnate, or yeah. incarnate. And I think, you know, that's, you know, when you talk about how is this pointing to Jesus, um, you know, how do we see, um, they're calling forth for here for God to, to show to show God's face. Mm -hmm. And the thing yeah. about it is, is that we can all look at di things differently. 
you know, I I can look outside and see the the gloomy weather and say, oh, it's so ugly outside, it's so bad, it's so geez. God, please show me the sun. Yeah. Or I can look outside and say, wow, isn't this wonderful that God's bringing us the needed moisture that we need and it's just wonderful how we provide. So it's, I think we all have different ways of, of looking at, uh, at things. And I think God shows us himself in many different ways. We just have to be open to see it. Was Moses the one that was cl closest to seeing the face of God in the Old Testament? Well, the, the legend, yeah, I mean, the story is that he, that was a pillow God, thing. that God, he saw the, he saw the behind, behind, well, on Sinai, he saw, he saw the behind of God, God, yeah. God turned and turned away. God does not see his, Moses doesn't see his face. God, he sees God's, the, the back of back. God, yeah. Yeah. the back of God. And so, well, maybe it's that maybe. God doesn't have a face. Maybe, maybe it's that it's just God is pure love, and that God shows up in the faces of more. of of humanity. Well, and, and I think of what Jesus says about you know. If you're <clears throat> You know, if you're looking for my face to, you know, to look into the the, the eyes of the needy, the eyes, you know, um, into the face of the poor, uh, and that was very much the text from for Christ the Christ, Christ the King Sunday. Mm -hmm. You know, this is where you'll see. When was it that this is saw you? This is where you're going to see my face. This yeah. is when you're going to see me. When was it that we saw you thirsty? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, and it's interesting that, you know, that here they, they, you know, then they turn on themselves in essence. Uh, <laughs> turn on themselves and say, well, it's our fault. We, you know, we have sinned and, uh, you know, and you're angry with us. And so that's why you aren't showing us your face. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, denying, denying the love of God, denying that, that God has, has uh, chosen them. I mean, which is again, interesting when they've just been brought back from exile. Yeah. You know, uh, you know what? What more do you need to know about God's love um, for you, um, and how we're? It's so easy for us to turn away, you know, to turn in on ourselves and turn focus on our our sinfulness and uh, how God um, God's not capable of. It's almost like God's not capable of loving us because we're sinners. And what kind of, <laughs> what, what kind of uh, theology is that? What kind of, uh, you know, what kind of God do we have of God? Uh, but, but, but then it's easy to follow that why are we sinners? <laughs> and we can, you know, oftentimes we blame that on God, I mean, at our worst times. Because we are sinners. Well, God sets some rules I, for. <laughs> well, that, that uh, you know, and that if that isn't who God, uh, you know, God created us um, to be in, as you you like to say, Don. You we have that freedom. Uh, we have that freedom yeah. to be. Uh, you know, the, the people that God, and sometimes we don't live up to those standards. Um, do, do we think that God's going to stop loving us because we don't live up to the standards? Um, you know, uh, oh, yeah, good, 
Good question. It's uh, <clears throat> predestination. Well, it's tough. It's tough. It's, 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 tough to, it's really difficult. It's difficult. Should we move to Psalm? Sure. O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God, let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. O God, Lord God of hosts, how long will your anger fume when your people pray? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you have, the one you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never re never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Let your face shine upon us. Once again, let's, you know, let your face shine upon us. That's as close as we can ever get to seeing the face of God in the Old Testament, probably. Let your face shine upon us. Sure. It's interesting. It's interesting in Advent for the Advent season. You know how, how we lead into it. We lead into it with the anger, fume. You know, you have, uh, oh Lord God of hosts, how long will your anger fume when your people pray? You know, it, 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 we're leading into into the Advent very uh, from a, a position of anger god's anger but later on at the end of the advent why so I, I suppose this lectionary has been written that way to slowly edge us into the christ child i don't know in my bible this says it's a psalm of asaph I don't know, A S A P H, mm -hmm. or what is A S A P H? Uh, um, Hebrew terms. It's the leader. The music leader? The music leader, maybe. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's, that appears in there all the time. Mm. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, hold on, I'll tell you. Asa, so the well, director of music, according to Psalm fifty, according to Giffith. Okay. Uh, Asa, yeah, Asaph was one of David's chief musicians. Okay. The designation may refer to a psalm composed or handed down by Asaph or the guild of singers associated with him or under his leadership. So yeah, a Asaph was a musician. And what does the word psalm mean? Sing. Sing. I think uh, psalms, psalmody. Is psalmody. Word, words of singing. It's okay. a good question. I'm, I'm just making a guess on that. Yeah, it says, Wikipedia, who knows everything, yeah, <laughs> says that uh, the Asaphites were named commonly used to identify temple singers. So these psalms were sung by the temple singers. Okay, that's interesting. Well, it must have been 
it would have been interesting to be a part of that community and then to hear these to hear these psalms sung as they were intended to be heard by the worshipers. Yeah, it said that these psalms of Asaph probably came after the uh, excelic period. Huh. Because they talk about the right name you know, of destruction. Well, you're all on, a, on the right track because the, I, I mean, I'm not going to answer my own question because I don't understand the, the, the answer here. The title Psalms and Psalter come from the Septuagint, the pre-Christian Greek translation of the Old Testament, where they originally referred to stringed instruments. Stringed instruments. Yeah, the Septuagint. Septuagint, yeah. Such as harp, lyre, and uh, lute. Then to song sung with their accompaniment okay so it's kind of a stringed uh, instrument connotation well and we're lately we've been adhering to that singing the psalms during the, the worship period. yeah we're going to go back to the original singing of the psalms here for advent oh okay where we go back to the the whole psalm is sung Oh, oh or, or, yeah. Ch chanted verses. Something. Yeah, Bev was trying to talk me into singing the whole thing. She had to talk me into a dime. <laughs> it's not like there's. Well, fortunately, you have a good voice. Well, you're kind. I mean, we just don't have a lot of musicians right now. So. Well, we used to have a plethora of musicians here. Well, we there. have them, but it's but just. But they're all undercover. Yeah. Yeah. Just like we're under masks. So, so. Yeah. <laughs> Affects my hearing. What'd you say? That's <laughs> yeah. what they said in the paper today. True. Well, Corinthians uh, 1, 3 through 9 here. Let's see, grace and peace. Yeah. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. I give you, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that is been given you in Christ Jesus for in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ he will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of the Lord Jesus Christ God is faithful. By him, you were called into fellowship of his son, into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Um, so you, you have that verse seven, the sense of revealing. The revealing, and this would be a good time to talk about the three ways Jesus, we wait for Jesus. We wait for Jesus in his uh, incarnate word. That's the first way. The second way is waiting for Jesus in the second coming and the an eschatological waiting or fulfillment of the kingdom. And then the third, the third way we wait for Jesus is daily. And uh, it's not so much a waiting as it is an expectation of Jesus in our lives daily. And, uh, and maybe in a sense, the way Pastor Klein had mentioned you know in the face of the the hungry or those in need maybe that's how jesus comes to us maybe jesus maybe jesus comes to us in a word or a reminder of our baptism or maybe jesus comes to us in a serendipitous encounter with someone who knows i mean it's jesus is there so those are the three ways that god has revealed to us in jesus christ And I go back to what I was talking about in Isaiah. Is if we're not looking for Christ in our daily life, he, he's very rarely going to come up and hit us up the side of the head and say, here I am. I think we miss, we miss, you know, yeah, that's what Advent teaches us is to wait and to look expectantly and 
and that whole centering, recentering ourselves for that, that revealing of God in our lives and to slow down, yeah. To, yeah, which I find it ironic because December is usually one of the busiest times of the year. Of the year. But I hope that <clears throat> it should be more contemplative. Yes. Yeah. And I wish that uh, I would have known exactly what Greta's craft was for the Advent wreath thing because I would have gotten a whole lot more of them because I think just the putting that together and then the daily activities, the Sunday activities, I think that helps make you aware, especially in this Advent season, and hopefully that'll carry on uh -huh. you know, into our lives after that. Uh, but it's, I hope whoever gets these and puts them together does make it a daily act. Because uh -huh. I think that'll really help in our expectations you know, of waiting for Christ now and then uh, looking to see Christ in our daily life for the rest of our life. Well, we're, I think, the response was pretty good for those. We had to order more, more supplies, and yeah, and uh, a lot of a lot of folks picked those up. But I think we can we can expand on that even more next next go around. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I agree. And then there's a daily devotional that went in there, and, and some songs to sing, and uh, yeah. yeah, it, it was a. Uh, pretty thoughtful yeah so let's have put that together and you know I, I think if we expect to see Christ in our daily life I think we'll see him well here's the question does do we see Jesus in you I mean can can, can others see Jesus in, in, in us and uh, how are your football game it's not the time to see Jesus in my house. <laughs> <laughs> although, <laughs> uh, although <laughs> now maybe now more so as I've uh, come to not be no. so proud and arrogant. <laughs> you know? But yeah, I, I think that's what he calls us to do is to shine his light to the world. And if we're all doom and gloomy and complaining about things or uh, we're treating other people unfairly, you know, there's not a lot of chance that anybody's going to see Jesus in our actions. Well, I think we get the human beings are judgmental by nature and it's just our, it's just the way we are. And we like to judge people by our own standards or the world standards instead of God's standards yeah. like you were saying earlier everybody everybody's created by god so if that's the tr if that's the case then we should be able to see god and anybody we encounter yeah. getting back to corinthians yeah so widely known that the immorality of corinth become become that become that the greek verb to Corinthianize came to mean to practice sexual immorality. Oh, yeah. In a setting like this, it is no wonder that the Corinthian church was plagued with numerous problems. Yeah, it was, Corinth was, a, I, it was, it was an intellectual red light, red light district. But it was, but it was next to Athens as far as, as, a. Uh, academic academically it was close to the people were the the, the kind of the elitist yeah uh, academically next to next to athens there is a lot going on in corinth yeah well is that why they some people say that the corinthian church was paul's favorite church 
is that, I mean, and if you look in the first and second Corinthians, he sure seems to favor or, you know, praise them. And is that because they had to overcome so much to, uh, to really come to faith in Jesus or? It was just really interesting for Paul. I mean, yeah, maybe it was, you know, happy honey ground for him. I mean, <laughs> A lot of low-hanging fruit there. Yeah. <laughs> well, the other thing about Corinth is that it was the crossroads of the Roman Empire. Yeah. yeah. I mean, all the soldiers, all the shipping. You know, it was a ma- it was the major port mm-hmm. yeah. through which all the shipping went. Yeah. And so very secular. So it was very diverse because you had people from all over. The Roman Empire, which at that time was the known world, uh-huh. uh, as far as they were concerned, so it was incredibly diverse. It was also incredibly wealthy because you know, we have all this industry, industry, and people, industry. yeah, just making money, making, shipping making money, and, uh, and so buying goods, uh, and so you know, uh, Corinth is was also a place where, um, you know, uh, on each of his missionary journeys or on a, at least on three, you know, that he was, he always went through Corinth. They had to. Where he didn't, he had to go through Corinth. Yeah. Where the other, other churches, uh, he didn't necessarily have to, um, have to go through there. It reminds me when they were building the railroad. They, you know, there's certain towns that were, were made because the workers had to camp and naturally they had gambling and drinking and right. women. And uh, oh, that's why, yeah, Omaha had a notorious reputation for a long time. Oh, yeah. Like and oh. I think Cheyenne, Wyoming, too. I think. Oh, yeah. So what I find interesting is this just is so. Here in Corinthians, uh, Paul is so positive about um, what what Christ is doing, what the Spirit, what God is doing for them in light of their waiting. Uh, you know, he's he uses very very positive language, and you know, in verse five of for you, you have been enriched in Him. Uh, uh, and verse six, your your the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of Jesus Christ, and that He will also strengthen you to the end. Um, and and then finally in verse nine, you know, and God is faithful. Like, you, know, you, you can trust that you can trust those promises and uh, so this is a very hope filled um, you know just a very hope filled uh, great reading for us uh, that speaks to us of God God's openness, God's willingness to work, to give us whatever we need. Um, and especially verse 9, you know, God is faithful and made at points of the grace of God. Like God, we were called into the fellowship of his son. Mm-hmm. It's, the whole passage is full of hope and love. But, but Corinth was be kind of the epitome, epitome of the pagan, more or less Greek pagan world. I mean, yeah, that's what First Corinthians. I mean, he points. And, and so, but but out. so the tension, the the tension was there. You, you if you're a Christian in Corinth, and you have all this, you know, stuff. sexuality stuff going around around you, sexuality, and everything, immorality going on around you. 
the tension had to be great, but but Paul had the advantage, and, and, and the tension was brought because the people were saying, man, we can't wait for that second coming, because at that point, at that time, you know, the second coming was more, it was imminent, wasn't it? I mean, uh, in, in, in Christi Christianity's uh, viewpoint, it was... Well, Paul not far off. Paul not mentions that in Thessalonians for sure. Not far off. But yeah. And so, well, in God's time, it probably isn't far off. Right. <laughs> He's probably <laughs> yeah. thinking that nebulous. Just of, you wait. Yeah. But, uh, universal. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if we're uh, very impatient people, and it. Uh, gets us in trouble just like it did for Abraham and Sarah. So well at that time it was within, you know, I mean they're talking about within decades or you know, I mean of our time even. I mean the second coming. It's pretty imminent in the thinking of the Christians. You know, it the thought just occurred to me that if you witness something like the cross, it was so Unworld. I mean, it was unworld. I mean, that there's no ref, frame of reference in creation to describe what happened on the cross and the resurrection. If you lived through that, then of course you probably thought, well, second coming, it's no big deal. It's going to be, yeah. it's going to be, it, it is imminent. I mean, they, they expected it because they just witnessed this cross. I mean, to me, that just points to the power of yeah. the resurrection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Because if they really thought that Christ was coming back, then they really saw the resurrection. I mean, they really experienced resurrection. So. Yeah. Yeah. We should live every day of our life like we're expecting him to come back at any moment. That's what he tells us. Yeah, I mean, I've asked that question before. If Jesus showed up in this room, would you tremble in fear or would you jump for joy? <laughs> Both. Yeah. Because <laughs> I've I probably uh, had some horrible thought, you know, ten seconds ago. Even though, you know, I I love you don't love want Christ him and uh, back during the football game. Yeah, yeah. Well, the truth of the matter is, when life calmed down, but when Collins got injured, it put things in perspective there for a little bit. And, uh, yeah, and and it, and in all honesty, I was praying um that he would be okay so but so i mean it's almost like the lord is with uh, scott frost and at the end of the game he said i'm going to soften this blow a little bit by calling putting things being injured you know and, and, <laughs> and bringing us back down to earth again bringing us what, what the true the truth the truth of athletics is really all about there you go. Yeah. Thank God he's okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's injured, but he'll be okay. But psychologically, I've got it. You know, psychologically, has an effect on everybody. Russell players. Oh yeah, it's a violent sport. I mean, somebody's bound to get injured. Rex Burkhead. Is he Joe injured? Joe Burrow's out. Oh yeah. Joey Burrow's too. That's Local cool. heroes, Joey Burrow's and Rex Burkhead out for the season. Yeah. Well, we're all Drew Brees out. They don't want us. I mean, we might. <laughs> <laughs> Should we go to Mark? Uh, yeah. Whose turn is it to read? Dad. I feel I'm humbled. 
Because Jesus said, in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give us light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the son of man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, uh, from the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become branches become tender and puts faith forth, ah, its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves. You know that the summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven, nor the son, but only the father. Beware. Remember that one. Neither angels in heaven nor the Son, but, but only the Father were distinguishing. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in come in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or at dawn or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly and what I say to you I say to all keep awake okay <laughs> yeah. uh. So also let me see. Well, it's not a time to have narcolepsy. <laughs> spiritual, <laughs> spiritual narcolepsy. Sleep apnea. Sleep apnea. Yeah. That was interesting what you said earlier about the three ways that we wait on Jesus. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's I, I, but I, but, but I, once again, I stopped, I hesitated, but about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the son, but only the father. Triune God. If the father knows, the son knows. Yeah. It's a metaphor, huh? Well, the son would immediately know when the father made a decision, but the son of the no, father are the same. Just because we believe in a triune God, that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are all one, it doesn't mean that the Son and the Spirit are, aren't subservient to, to God. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I'll have them. Oh, I can't buy that. I, I, <laughs> well, it's, I, I, you know, I don't. I'm not saying that. I, yeah, I don't know. No, that's that. a good argument. That's that. It is an argument, though. Sure, it is. I mean, that's when I was brought up. You know, it's God the Father, and then oh yeah, well, there's God the Son because He's the Son, and and the Holy Spirit is. It's a hierarchical thing. I mean, that's the way I always featured it. But I, I'm trying to get away from that. Um. I find I find that I find Trinitarian theology one of the most difficult things to explain yeah. theologically and and even to understand. I mean, yeah, uh, it's yeah. It, I mean, the best way anybody's ever explained to me is that it's a dance uh, between the and I think Glenn's used that terminology too. It's a dance between the three the three persons of God and um, you know they can all they're all equal but they all show up at different times different ways and Jesus I think we have to remember that Jesus is is the word incarnate though and that I mean I think that the words 
to me, we, to me, this text is somewhat irritating because I wish it would just stop at verse 31 and I could have a sermon on, on verse 31, but then we get into 32 through 37 and it's, it's like a totally, I mean, it's not totally different, but it's like a different topic. And, um, and they even have it marked that way in your Bible. Um, but what does it mean that his words won't pass away? They're timeless. So when we're, when we're trying to explain the timing of God, it's kind of a futile effort. I mean, it's, it's like God's time is not our time. God's time is, is timeless. And God, I mean, we think of time as an arrow that points in one direction. And yet God decided to plant this cross right in the middle smack dab of human history. And it, does that mean that everything before the cross didn't matter? I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's one of those mind boggling kind of ventures we get into. Well, in, in many ways, everything before the cross didn't matter other than it all leads us to the cross. There you go. And, uh, you know, we, we're still a very sinful people and we could never live by but all those people you know before the cross had the had the promise of the cross somewhere. yeah they didn't have the promise yeah exactly i mean so yeah that's what i said it's all yeah. even back when you know the first recorded time of you know god after you know, leading to all of this in Abraham. I mean, they had that promise. Look at the yeah. promise that Noah had. Yeah. And, uh, so it's uh, it's all pointing to the cross. Okay. So the Noah thing that Noah that, that's such an abrupt. That, that was such an abrupt interruption in the whole scheme of things. Do so. you think maybe Jesus is, is saying in, in many ways, just don't stop worrying about time. Mm -hmm. Live every day as if that's the most important. Mm -hmm. And stop worrying about the future because you worry about the future. You, you, you're distracted by it things that are important this day. Well, and, yeah, and, and why keep waiting for heaven? Why don't we live like we've already got heaven? Because right. Christ tells us we already we got that promise and God never lied to us. So let's live every day like, you know, we already ha are in heaven, have heaven. And that's, why I, that's why I like that explanation of three ways we wait for Jesus because the third way is living today in the promise of the resurrection and we don't know we don't know when we don't know when our last day is um, I hope it's not for a long time but you know no matter what God, we're in God's hands so don't worry about it yeah I mean, and that's it's, uh, you know, it's the little things you can do. And, uh, we're almost finished. So I'm going to tell you a little story. Last year, we had a snowstorm and it was very icy. And the garbage truck slid into my front yard and made some deep ruts Ruts. in my front yard. <laughs> the garbage truck is stuck in my front yard. So nice rod, good old loving faith in Jesus rod is fuming. Yeah. Because the garbage truck is 
I'm tearing up my yard. What what is and, and what does wonderful Cindy do? Or she bakes some cookies. Cookies for the uh. so and of course I have to take the cookies out to the, the garbage bin in the truck. And it's you know, it started a relationship. You know, the guy's out there, he's so sorry, he's you know, and it it made us all so today, you know, is the end of the thing. So she made him cookies again today. And uh, oh. you know, it's just uh, as, it can change, an anniversary. change your life a little thing like that yeah. you know that uh, yeah. and, and change me too because I'm so angry and mad about these people tearing up my and it's not their fault I mean it's an icy road they probably shouldn't have been out doing garbage anyway but uh, yeah. you know they had these sprinkler heads that you had to replace or uh, turns out not nothing right. you know it was uh, of course that's what I'm worried about you yeah. know all this stuff but you know, it's God just showed me, right? There's no need to be upset. No, there's no need to worry about things. I'm going to take care of this, and He did. So it's a good so, sermon illustration, right there. Yeah. You, should, you should preach on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'm <laughs> ready. <It's> yours. <laughs> you're, you're the second Daryl Kellams. <laughs> he used to preach. Daryl did. Oh, oh yeah, Daryl. Daryl. He he could get up in that. Really? Oh yeah, he can preach a sermon. I unfortunately I didn't know him. You didn't his, know him. I mean, I knew I you yeah I him buried him, but I didn't. Oh, I didn't know him in his in his, his prime, and you, I know you he probably was knew him a little bit more. Quite an educator. Well, by the time I got here, I you know they were the family was I don't know what had happened in the because the family was not not involved uh when i was here um those two uh, and a half years that i was here uh, in the interim right uh whatever had happened oh yeah okay a lot of things were happening, happening at that time and right he well, died. yeah if they had some just enchanted right yeah okay so yeah, I'm he was, he's a fu he, fundamentalist and so when you talk about um, he was he, he well not i mean he he preached like a fundamentalist oh and uh rod <laughs> now we can say that rod is plan b from put me in plan. coach yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, thinking okay. about the garbage truck i mean that that would have been pretty traumatic for your yard and i, I get upset every time a golf cart gets near my grass <laughs> i mean <laughs> yeah i can imagine it if it if the, uh, well, Glenn's if, seen my yard, and and you're right on that edge. So, you know, it happened. You know, jump. Oh, we got to jump the curb, and uh, well, somebody did. Somebody did one day because there was there was uh, construction right in front of our house, and there the whole street was torn up. So you had to go around and take a detour. This guy, this guy's with his son, and he's going up to the. Uh, He's going up to, because I know where he went, because I went after him. And, <laughs> and so he's going, up, he's going up to the practice, to the driving range. And, uh, yeah. and I'm getting ready to leave anyway. I can sneak out of my driveway through the other side. Here he comes right through my front yard. I just looked at, I'm like, did I just see what I thought I saw? <laughs> hey, dude. <laughs> so I drove over and I said, you know, it, that's not that's not appropriate um you, he didn't care yeah so, well i gotta it is, it's the I whole, gotta the whole, there. The whole neighborhood's torn up yeah. i said well my my yard's not a detour for you anymore so yeah yeah and then i then i called the the oh, greenskeeper yeah. and yeah. said could you remind these people yeah, well, the golfers are the worst offenders in the world. Too. There's some of the nicest people, and then there's some that are just not. Well, isn't that nice. like the whole world? Yeah, yeah. Well, you get all kinds. Yeah, depends yeah. on how much. If you're a good golfer, you, you don't have you're, you have a blank mind. You're, you're, that's that's a epitome of hitting golf balls when your mind is completely blank. You're not even you're doing. 
Well, you surely have to forget the bad shots, or you right. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to get those out for sure. For sure. Well, we don't get mulligans anywhere else in life, do we? Yeah. Well, we just get mulligan every day. <laughs> there you go. We well, close with the Lord's yeah, prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Our, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Yeah, that guy didn't get any cookies. <laughs> uh,